Hi friends. If you click to check out the new Bite Beauty, what is this foundation called? Hold on. The Changemaker Supercharged Micellar Foundation, then please keep on watching. Hi, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick ahead up to my Instagram. Timestamps will be down below for any portion of the video you wish to see. In fact, product details start here. Demo starts here. You're welcome. If you're wondering why I'm doing this review, after all my blah, 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 I don't wear products with fragrance in them. I also know, and I don't want this to come out in the wrong way, I'm kind of here to serve you in regards to product reviews because I understand a lot of you don't live near a Sephora or a retail space that might sell said foundation. And when it comes to shade matching online, it could be quite difficult depending on the brightness of your screen or what device you're looking at. Probably hard to tell if you're medium beige, medium tan, medium warm. If you are around my skin shade, I did grab a sample of the Bite Beauty Foundation, and this is just to kind of help you guide your shopping decision if you really want to grab this, because it's not about me sometimes, friends. I know I push a lot of my own opinions and I know it's my platform. However, it's not about me a lot of the time and if you could care less about there being fragrance in said product and you still want to buy it anyway, you don't have access to a Sephora, you're not able to swatch this live and you really want to know where your shade matches and we're close in shade color, then here we are. I dropped by, grabbed me a sample of the Bite Beauty Foundation and from quickly swatching both T let me see here. I believe it was T110 and T105. I managed to pick up T105. I thought the T110 was a little too warm. It's described to be medium tan with warm peach. So I went up one to the T105. It's medium tan with warm golden undertones. In addition to the foundation, they appear to have a flexible coverage pressed powder as well as a skin optimizing primer. This foundation retails for $39.50. You do get one ounce of product or 30 milliliters, which is a standard amount of foundation or we hope that it will be. It comes in a squeezy tube. A lot of people aren't crazy about that. I love a pump design, but I think the squeezy tube is a little more easy to recycle. It comes in in 32 shades. And again, I have the shade T105. Excuse me. T105, which again is medium tan with warm gold undertones. And I'm on the Sephora website here. What is it? A clean, long wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural, flawless finish. The coverage is medium. The finish is natural. The formulation, a liquid. Skin tight recommendations for the foundation normal, dry combination, and oily. Highlighted ingredients. This is what I looked into before. Maki berry, antioxidant rich ingredient that helps nurture your complexion. Micellar technology gently mimics skin texture for a smooth, non cakey look. What else do you need to know? Make the change to clean and high performance. This creamy long wearing foundation perfects your skin with buildable medium coverage. The secret, Bite Beauty uses antioxidant rich superfood maki berry and gentle micellar technology that works with and feels good on your skin even when you're sensitive. The maki berry is second to last on the ingredient list of like 20 something ingredients. In regards to the fragrance, because I did mention on my last chat that it did have fragrance, the Parfum fragrance shows up around 20 and the Cinnamon Linolu Limonin is at the bottom. But hear this, the Aristotelia chilensis fruit extract is the maki berry. I googled what is the chemical name for maki berry and Aristotelia came up Aristotelia is way down on the ingredient list and what that indicates to me is that it's actually not lending much antioxidant protection at all and if it was not for the antioxidant protection maybe it lends some texture benefits. I don't think you're going to see those either, which is fine. The only reason I bring that up is if you were looking to buy this foundation because you're thinking of getting antioxidant benefit from it, you're not. The antioxidant benefit you'll be getting from a product is what, friends? Your sunscreen. And if you have a vitamin C serum that you love to use, use that. But don't, 
Don't buy this foundation thinking it's gonna give you antioxidant protection. Okay, that's all I'm saying. In regards to the fragrance, even though the fragrance parfum ingredient is there, I don't smell anything on my face. I applied this this morning over my Can Make sunscreen, which leaves behind a softer matte finish than my Evie Technology sunscreen. And it did dry down really lovely, really soft matte, like a true plushy soft matte. And I was really pleased with that finish. Now I applied my Evie Technology sunscreen, which is a little more satin in finish. So it'll be interesting to see how the foundation reacts finish wise on top of the EV. Because I don't have the product box, I don't know where this foundation is made. So if you wanna drop that info down below, if you happen to already have purchased it, I will put it in a pinned comment. But yeah, I grabbed myself a little sample. So this is, hold on, why don't we um, get in a little closer? <laughs> That's enough. Here is the texture of the tester. And I find it to be, like a lightweight, moussey type of creamy consistency is actually really nice when I applied it this morning. What we'll do is apply with a brush and apply with the sponge. I have my Sigma sponge here. I haven't used it in quite some time because anytime I'm traveling, I don't bother with washing it and making sure it's clean. So I resorted to either a brush application or a finger application. And yeah, I know, I don't, I don't, I'm ignore we're ignoring her. That's right, blur. We don't want to see her. I don't plan on picking up the pressed powder or the primer as I don't use primer since I'm out and about and I apply makeup in the morning. It's because I will be out during the day and sunscreen is, is the only primer that I rely on. But I believe Evie makes it so that anything you apply on top of it will not disrupt the shield and the sun protection. I mean, I love the texture the Evie leaves my skin in, so I'm kind of fine with that. So this is the shade T105. And funny enough, it applies pretty warm, but throughout the day, I applied this around maybe 6, 30 in the morning and I took it off just now to reapply a new layer around 11. So around the six hours, it kind of melted into my actual skin tone, which was really great to see. I feel like you're still too far away and I feel like you might be a little light cause it's super sunny out, which is great but I prefer it to be a little or just cloudy so it do I don't look too warm. Any leftover I take with my brush. This is, by the way, my Wayne Goss 24S. This video is definitely more of a first impressions and a shade match video, if anything, friends. Because no matter what I think about the foundation, I'm not getting it, again, because it has fragrance. And although I don't smell anything, and I don't think you will either, by no means does it smell like the Fenty. I have so many foundations already that I'm just kind of like, I could wait. If I really wanted the Bite Beauty along the way, I'll wait. Here is the first layer of coverage and you can still see my hyperpigmentation showing through. And while I understand the marks are fairly dark, I will have to go in with concealer anyway. But if you want, I'm gonna cut down the exposure a little bit because I feel like I'm still too bright. This is without foundation. This is with the T105. You can see there's significant warmth added from that application. And I like it because I don't no longer tan with the sun, tanning beds or what have you. I don't use self tanner. I much prefer for my foundation to give me just a little bit of warmth for sure just so I don't look so flat and dull. Now I'm picking up a little bit more from my sample so we could see how this goes on with a sponge. And in the same way, I like to warm up the product on the back of my hand first, put some fingertip spools on that, and then take the sponge and carefully work it on the skin. Because this is medium coverage, if you're looking to get the most out of this foundation coverage wise, I wouldn't go in with the sponge because naturally the sponge is going to take away more product than a brush would, especially a synthetic bristle brush, right? But I have to say, if you're looking to get more light medium coverage from this foundation, you actually don't want a whole lot, then a sponge will be perfect for you because the texture I feel is great for a sponge application and it works the product into the skin very well, very easily. 
doesn't take very much to blend at all. And whatever more coverage you need, I dab on the back of my hand with the sponge and I go over those portions of my face. And here is the coverage. Now, while I understand I have that really gnarly blemish, I'm taking my Fenty Beauty 180 brush. I think this is, yes, their Concealer 180 brush. Whatever leftover product I have, which, you know, just enough to spot treat whatever needs to be spot treated. And that's something I would do no matter the foundation, friends, to avoid your application to look heavy in any way. You don't want to go over the portions this small, right, with more foundation with a sponge. You want to go in just a little bit more smaller brush to ensure a more precise application so that you can control the texture left behind on your skin yeah and if you happen to have a sponge nearby it's always good to go over the portions of the skin that you feel have too much foundation if you need to take some away i like to use a smaller brush around the nostrils and over my top lip as well. Now in terms of texture, oh, wrong way. I actually really like the bite. I think the bite is lightweight. Uh, because I applied this on my Evie sunscreen, I feel it definitely leaves behind more of a satin finish. But if you're applying this over something that leaves behind more of a soft matte texture like my Can Make sunscreen, I think it will dry down a little more soft matte. I didn't actually powder this heavily at all this morning. I kind of lightly did so with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Press Powder, which I'll do now. And quick update on the Hourglass Concealer. I had a moment yesterday when I was applying my concealer. I applied it and I just forgot to set it. I totally forgot to set it. Not that I have been setting heavily, but I usually go in with a light dusting of either the Hourglass Veil or the Charlotte Tilbury. Totally forgot. And when I looked in the mirror at one point during the day, I was like, you didn't set your concealer. But it was fine. It was fine. I actually combined the Hourglass with the new uh, Dior Forever Skin Correct. So, and it just dried down soft matte. I it, it didn't budge when I like quickly just wiped away any mascara droppings from my lower lash line. It just stayed, but it didn't look dry. It was actually quite remarkable. And yesterday was very cold. It was windy, it was cold. I liked it. I like that. If you're if you're like me and have like a moment, if you get to set these concealers, they technically don't need setting, which is kind of great. But see, I have to experiment again with the Giorgio Armani because I always set the Giorgio Armani and I'm wondering if I left it unset, what would happen? I'll get back to you on it. Pan you out a little more. So what do we think about this shade, friends? If you are around my skin tone, uh, if the foundation matches that I have down below are pretty consistent with what you tried in real life. I think the T105 will do quite well. And although I look warm on screen, I don't look as warm in person. And I feel it kind of dialed down in warmth as the hours went. This is the Hourglass Airbrush Vanish in Sienna. Taking my little Chikohoto T6 brush. I'm gonna whip that around and under the eyes. Put a little more here. So all in all, I actually think this Bite Beauty is worth checking out. But I wouldn't recommend it if you have really sensitive skin. And while I'm aware the linalool and all those other ingredients are way down on the ingredient list, they're still present. So I'm not sure what risk you are taking in still applying this foundation if you have very sensitive skin. We all technically do have sensitive skin and run the risk of having a, a reaction to those ingredients. But, but if you don't care, then go for it. Go for it. So this had time to kind of dry down. I really like the texture. Absolutely. I think this is ideal for the makeup wearer that doesn't want a heavy foundation, that just wants a 
seamless experience, not worrying about if they're applying too much or too little. I think you don't have to be so careful with this foundation because it is so lightweight in texture. For instance, I would go in with caution using the Hourglass Vanish Liquid Foundation because that is formulated to be used very little of, and if you use too much, it could be a disaster. But with this, you could be a little more, I wanna put in a little more today and it'll be fine. I think it blends into the skin quite nicely. I do think it leaves a natural finish for sure. On a drier skin type, I dare say it will leave more of a plusher, soft matte finish and soft matte in the most satin way. I don't think it's going to make your skin feel dry or appear dry. Definitely would not look textured. If you want coverage though, I would highly recommend that you go in with a concealer first, spot treat the areas that you want more coverage on, and then go in with this foundation after. I think you'll be more successful in still using less foundation and your skin appearing more natural-like, more skin-like, despite it having foundation. If you want the coverage, I think this is quite layerable. Actually, if you wanted to try, I'll grab a little more of my sample here, and I'll go in with my brush this time. I think I'll go in with my Wayne Goss 24S again, and it layers beautifully. I think you can go in with two layers and it not feel heavy on the skin at all and it leaves behind a really nice texture. If we want to see how it does with powder, I'll do what I did this morning. I'll take my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish, press in medium two, look at me using up my products. Taking my Hakuhodo Holiday 2018 Fan Brush, which I've been loving as my powder brush because it's so wispy in texture and design and applies just such the, the right light amounts, not too much. So in terms of powder, I think if you are on the drier side of the spectrum, you don't need to powder down this foundation. But if you believe in reinforcements, then I don't think it will hurt to lightly dust with powder. I would go in with a really soft brush and not bake at all. Just for the sake of it, I'll then set my concealer, why not? This is with my Wayne Goss Airbrush brush. Lightly tapping here just to set everything. I don't technically need to do my brows, but just a little bit. a little better perhaps and I'm happy I did my brows while the camera was running just so it gave the foundation to dry down a little bit more I like the texture a lot friends I think this is a solid foundation all around yes I don't like the fact that it has fragrance but nice to have a product available for those who want that true medium coverage that's going to leave behind a really skin like natural finish and just allow your skin to look like skin but better. I think this product truly presents itself as a foundation filter for your skin. And I didn't even apply this with my Hollywood Flawless Filter from CT. I could only imagine how more of a blurring effect it would leave behind. Just painting you out so you can see the overall color. I do look a little more golden than my neck, but I think if I would have done a the next shade up from the T105 is the T100, which is medium tan with neutral undertone. That could possibly work on me too. I just tend to lean more towards warm. And I found after the six hours from when I applied the foundation this morning, it just dialed into my own skin tone and looked like my skin tone. It didn't look this warm when I first apply it six something in the morning, which I think is a nice feature if I do say so myself. So maybe something to look forward to if you do decide to buy this foundation or even try it, is that it works with your skin tone, absolutely. It's not going to mask it. It's definitely going to work with your tones, the different ones that you have, and the foundation will just be your skin shade, which is why I would go maybe 
a little warmer than usual if it's going to appear a little lighter in appearance and that will only make me assume if I were to get the T100 as a sample I will probably look too washed out but again that is totally up to you that is totally your preference an update on the hourglass vanish liquid Honey is now a little too warm for me because I haven't been tanning. So right now, golden tan, I think, is my true match. So if you're around golden tan or honey in the hourglass vanish, if you are uh, medium 15 in the Pat McGrath foundation, if you are dose of colors, medium tan 122, I'll make sure to put all my foundation shades down below. I think if you wanted to grab the Bite Beauty that you will be T105. All right, friends, I hope this helped. I'm sorry to do a wear test for you, but I'll be more than happy to provide any updates of the wear down below as I finish this sample. I believe wear tests could be tricky because we're not in the same climate. We're not in the same lifestyle of things. Whether you're somewhere more humid, more dry, more cold, more warm, I think it really determines the finish, the wear of your foundation. And something that wears well on me in this winter climate and with exercising whatnot might be better for you or might not be better for you but I'll be sure to leave those updates down below in a pinned comment and I will also leave my foundation playlist down below if you want to see uh, any of my most recent concealer reviews or any uh, older foundation reviews here on my channel let me know if you plan on grabbing the new bite beauty foundation friends if you have already what are your thoughts on it if you're not too sure maybe we can answer some of those questions down below and until then, friends, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you again with another review, first impressions, favorites lists, or Friday night chit chat. Take care and I'll see you again soon.